monitoring. A new study claims red light camera companies care more about their bottom line than your safety. This comes after Albuquerque voters decided to give red light cameras the boot. The Target 7 reporter Will Carr says city council members still have to decide if the cameras will stay or go. A new study states that red light camera companies like Redflex want one thing, the green. Cities should view camera systems only as a way to make roads safer and never as a way to increase revenues. But Alex Corkett with NMPIRG, a statewide consumer protection organization, says that Redflex and other companies operate their cameras with profit in mind instead of safety. Just last year, Redflex, an Australian-based company, saw its earnings jump more than 30 percent. It took in almost $140 million in revenue and made more than $10 million in profit. The bottom line is that uh, this is a company that's for profit. They're going to make a profit, and, uh, and that's what these cameras do. City Councilman Dan Lewis says Red Flex has made $18 million on its red light program in Albuquerque alone. Revenue gathered does not stay in the city, it does not stay in the state, and does not st even stay in the country. In fact, while Red Flex was making money, Albuquerque was hemorrhaging millions of dollars to pay for its part of the program. We reached out to Red Flex for their response to the study, but our calls were not returned. Lewis says there are better things to spend money on to help keep drivers safe than red light cameras. He says you can extend the length of yellow lights, you can also make the lights themselves more visible. If we are forced to put time and energy and resources into alternative measures that have proven to increase safety, the city is going to be better, better, better because of it. Measures that Lewis says will also save taxpayers big bucks. Pedestrians beware for the next few days. Albuquerque police will be enforcing traffic laws at busy intersections. Action 7 News reporter Amber Lee is live at Central and San Mateo to tell us why. Doug, well, APD considers this one of its most dangerous intersections. So for two hours this afternoon, officers in both uniform and in plain clothing were giving out warnings, citations, and information flyers to those breaking the law. Dave Cook should have been cited for jaywalking. Instead, APD officers are giving him a warning and handed him one of these. I just was trying to get through traffic and didn't realize I was doing anything wrong. But I'm sorry, I was just going to get over to the gas station to get some coffee. It's all part of a four-day campaign called Look For Me. APD wants pedestrians and drivers to look out for each other. They're focusing on busy intersections like this one. Especially in the intersections such as Central and San Mateo, pedestrians are getting hit all the time. For two hours on Thursday, officers were watching the streets trying to enforce the law. Our cameras caught 16 people breaking the law. Some walking, some on bikes, and others in their cars not paying attention. You're crossing right there. These cars, some of these cars aren't going to see you. That's not all, also the drivers, it's also the pedestrians. They're not using the crosswalks properly, so we need to enforce that. APD mm. says it takes pedestrian safety seriously. Eight things for history. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, William Howard Taft, and President Barack Obama. One young girl traced them all back to one common ancestor. They're all cousins and all grandsons of John Lachlan. It's the first family tree of its kind, pouring through more than half a million names for months. 12-year-old Bridge Ann D'Avignon discovered that all the U.S. presidents, except Martin Van Buren, are related to the former king of England, John Lackland Plantagenet, signer of the Magna Carta in 1215. Mildred Reed is his first great-grandmother on George Washington. And on Obama, Mildred Reed is the 10th great-grandmother. It started as an assignment to research her own lineage, tracing it back to roots in France. But Bridge Ann wanted to branch out. Well, I think we just all go back somewhere, or it's just a matter of proving it. She started with George Washington, but unlike other professional genealogists that only looked at the male family lines, Bridge Ann was able to link the presidents together using both male and female ancestry. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, October 28th, 2011. I'm Darko. Uh, welcome. My website is ggnonline.com, ggnonline.com, and ddarko2012 is my YouTube channel. Okay, I'm done with that. And we just went uh, through um, Obama's lineage, and of course, there's no surprise to that, right? This guy is a mystery man. And uh, it says here, Obama blames gray hair on genes and not stress. So, He's right. Is it? It's not stress. What would he be stressful over besides lying his fucking teeth off to all of his constituents um, and his country, who aren't even his constituents? Um, 
it's not just that, that stress of lying, but uh, it's, it is genes because, you know, hey, he is related to the British royal family, family, right, like everything else. So speaking of royal families, I also found this little tidbit of information that, uh, you know, most of the plebes and slaves, they're not going to know what the fuck this means. I'm part of my French, but I'm a little fired up today. They're not going to know what this means, right? Ooh, Blue Bloods, Prince Charles joins campaign to save Transylvania's forest because of his family. Oh, his family connections to Count Dracula. Hmm. Also known as Vlad the Impaler. So Prince Charles is campaigning to save the forest of Transylvania inspired by his ancestral links um, to Vlad the Impaler, 15th century nobleman, better known by his patronym. Oh, Dracula. Remember, I just covered this Halloween special. So, and uh, you go in there and check that out. They have different reasons uh, for why. So it makes me wonder, is Obama related to Vlad the Impaler? Hmm, I don't know. You know, no, that's exactly correct. And throughout history, there have been stories of him. I mean, the most famous one, Vlad the Impaler, or Count Dracula in Transylvania, who really did drink blood and, in my opinion, was a shape-shifting reptilian uh, who kidnapped local villagers as well as invading uh, Ottoman uh, soldiers, hung them up from trees in his uh, property, drained their blood, and had the blood dr uh, drip onto his breakfast, and it would eat out in the open. Uh, with you know, uh, with the the food and the blood right on it. Um, so so these are things which are in our history. They are in the books for children, um, and now they are on the media every single day. So here's the point I'm trying to make. The individual you just heard on that radio show that I included in my ho ho uh, Hollywood, my Halloween special series, was Stuart Swerdlow. And you don't have to believe in everything he says. I don't. But I take it into consideration because it's a crazy world. And, uh, you know, it just really dawned on me. It really hit, not really dawned on me, but it really hit me yesterday when I was watching that uh, eugenics, the rise of the eugenics um, agenda. Very, very... Um, I mean, it'll make your the hair stand on the back of your neck. It did to me. I mean, I was sitting there. Someone in the comment board wrote that their jaw was still on the ground. I mean, that's how I felt when I watched it yesterday for the first time. I mean, they're laying out. These are these people are serious with their agenda of like bringing on this uh, scientific dictatorship, which they kind of already have, but to the point to where they actually kill the human race and move into cyborgs and all that. I mean, this isn't a joke. I and mean, stage alien invasions is not a joke. This is stuff that is on the docket. It's coming down the road here, whether aliens really do exist or not. Um, you know, I think I think I even came across to something Alex Jones was talking about it, and that's not why I'm talking about it. It just kind of comes up in the news, and I thought I'd include this. Blue, Blue Blood, True Blood, Conflict and Creation. This is a book that I actually own, and I read it. And what he goes in there and says is that, uh, is that most humans have what? They have red blood, which is from the iron. When, you know, of course, the air, oxygen hits the, that iron and the blood, stuff like that turns red. But with blue bloods, it's because uh, these entities, if you want to call them, have a lot of copper in their blood. I believe it's copper, not zinc, but if I'm wrong, correct me. Um, I don't have the time right now to go through it and look uh, for the exact quote in that video or in the book, because I don't have the book on me right now. But either way, it's because of that that they call them blue bloods, when uh, the copper-rich blood hits the uh, hits uh, uh, the oxygen, basically the air. So hopefully I didn't overdo this, but I just wanted to include. So more on British royalty again. It's a girl. British royal succession rules to change. This is a big deal. So centuries of British royal discrimination. Ooh, discrimination. See, before it was just the way. It was the old order. Now it's see. Uh, it's the new order, like Kabul or Kabul or Kabal said in the uh, Things to Come video. Remember, um, that's the it's the new order and done with the new with the old order. So the new order includes what um, the feminine, right? So it said here came to an end on Friday after the Commonwealth leaders agreed to drop rules that give sons precedence. Uh, as here to the throne and bar anyone in line for the crown from marrying a Roman Catholic. And this, of course, is a big deal, right? Because this is all about the bloodlines. This is all about the Illuminati bloodlines and the families. And, of course, you had um, uh, Pippa, the programming icon, Kate Middleton. Um, you know, she was, I thought that she wasn't married, actually um, related to uh, her husband, her new husband, but actually it came out that she was. 
So it was kind of a surprise because they said, oh, she, he mirrors a commoner. It ended up that they ended up being related. But looking at that Obama video, how he was related, related to uh, British royalty, that, that girl that did, did that, uh, that project, she did what? She used both the male and the female side. So I wonder if they're going to start doing this so they can start exposing how they're basically all related. Yeah, ultimately we're all related, right? It's a big utopia. So it said here, a judge blocks most of San Francisco's cell phone warning law. So middle management for the powers that be, if you've ever seen uh, uh, Edge of Darkness with Mel Gibson, it's a great movie. And it says here, a federal judge has struck down most of the San Francisco law that requires retailers to warn customers about cell phone radiation and its health effects. Remember, I just covered an article uh, in the last series about how um, the, uh, what was it, the FDA, FCC, um, basically we're not testing the radiation correctly. So you're actually getting more dose of radiation than you should be. And of course, what? More middle management scumbags come out uh, as authoritative figures and um, say, what? Oh, a study is actually squashes, rejects that link to cell phone radiation. So then again, like middle management are judges. These are the guys that make the decisions. They go in their little secret chambers with all their little Illuminati symbology and... Um, Yes, and then they come out and uh, they're briefed by whoever it is that handles them, and um, they make the decision. So, you know, it's just like democracy. It's all a big sham. There is no justice, real justice, uh, legal system where you're going to get justice, um, and there is no real uh, democracy. I almost wonder if there's actually real freedom. It says here, a possible study of anthrax vaccine's effectiveness in children stirs the debate. Oh, it says, see, they're going to debate this, whereas before... There's no way on the uh, uh, there's no way on earth that this would get done before, but because what our society, our planet is pretty much morally bankrupt at this point in time in space that this has to be debated that the Obama administration or the Obama regime, as I call it, or the Sartoro regime is wrestling with the thorny question of whether scientists who see the scientists as the experts should inject healthy children with anthrax vaccines to see whether the shots would safe, uh, safely protect them against a bioterrorism terrorism attack. I unfortunately received these vaccinations, the booster and the follow-ups, um, because I was supposed to go over to Iraq. But fortunately for me, looking back on it, I didn't go. <laughs> the best I did was go to Spain. And uh, I, you know, because I was a, basically a parachute rigger. And I just helped uh, all the air crew, the uh, little uh, fighter jets and that, with their oxygen mask and uh, survival gear and stuff like that. So that was my thing. And it was a short debt in Spain. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy, but I got all my vaccinations and then my unit ended up not going once and then not going twice. And of course, what they sent the unit that uh, actually crashed the jet <laughs> in, in, on our base in South Carolina, and then they sent them over and failed inspections. So that's how the military works. That's just, and most people that were in the military, especially the Marine Aviation will tell you that's how it works. Chinese uh, or China's cabinet approves emergency vaccine provision plan. So a state council of China's cabinet on Wednesday approved a plan to create a national vaccine provision system in order to boost the country's ability to cope with China's twin Hong Kong holds exercise to prepare for avian flu outbreak. They're letting you know that's what they're going to be letting loose out of the laboratory. Shock vaccine study reveals influenza or the flu vaccines only prevent the flu 1.5 out of every 100 adults. Then we have latest generation of contraceptive pills increase risk of blood clots and probably other stuff. Fertility drug raises ovarian cancer risk. Cell phone towers, EMR, damaging biological systems of birds, insects, and of course humans. There was a study done on that before, but of course it was what? Rejected by the experts, China touts its one-child policy for slowing the world population. And British families are shrinking as 60% of parents say they cannot afford to have a child, but abortion is safer than having a baby, and the doctors say that. And the next challenge is not too many people, but too few. And Sorry, guarantee you that there will never be too few people in the eyes of the elites. School swim classes upgraded from medium to high risk. And Ohio University students hit racist Halloween costumes, BS. Boy wanting to join Girl Scouts 
is told no, but they will accept transgender youth. Programming icon Madonna says her brother is homeless, but what? Oh, her stalker got detained indefinitely, of course, because she's the powers that be's queen. This is GGN, and I'm Darko.